Okay, unit two is a very short unit. And what we'll be doing in unit two is, uh, unit one, we spent a lot of time, we talked about limits, but we've also spent a lot of time talking about this kind of an idea. How if you have a graph, let's go here, this will work. And let's say the blue one is F, and the orange is F prime. A lot of what you'll be tested on on test one is this idea that, hey, if I am looking at F, and I'm looking right here on F, this spot, that means I've got my function here, so x coordinate, got F. If I'm looking right there, that's going to be about x equal 3.3 and the y value turns out to be about negative 95 in this example. So we've talked about that. More importantly, we've talked about how right at that spot, right here, the blue function f has some tangent slope. We've also talked about how if I have f prime, I can look at f prime at the same x coordinate and identify that the value of f prime is negative 60 and that value of f prime corresponds to the slope of f. So I can tell you that right here the tangent slope of f is negative 60. That's what we've talked about so far. Question? And this is just an open discussion to get us started on unit two. So any curiosity, any thought, just anything, just feel free to jump in. So, are we good? All right. Uh, what we do in unit two though, uh, so we've never talked about where this number comes from. Like we've talked about how this y coordinate is negative 60 on the graph of f prime. Uh, therefore, the slope of f at that spot is negative 60. But we have not done any discussion about how to compute that value of negative 60. Uh, that's what we do in unit two, is we learn how to find that value. Uh, that was exciting. Um, so anyway, please, Mary. So here's literally what we're going to learn to do. Um, if I have a function f, and um, in this example, uh, I think I moved the formula for f, so I can't see it anymore. But anyway, I'll just make something up. If f happened to be this formula, I'm just making something up here. I don't know what f is. We're going to learn that you can compute the value of f prime and come up with a formula for f prime. We won't do it today, but that's where we're headed. Okay. Today's discussion, I want to make sure you have a good sense of how this is created. And here's how it works. What we do, basically, is we look at a curve like this we look right here, and we say we want to find the slope at that spot. Uh, I have a different picture, but it's similar enough to get the idea. So we're going to look at this picture, and so here's my curve in red, and the spot I'm interested in is right here, this, this point 1 comma 5. I tried to get that to be exactly 5, but it it doesn't really want to be exactly 5. It struggles. Oh, 4.99. Come on. I should not have moved it. Yeah. Now we'll be here for an hour trying to get that to move. That will have to do. Okay. 
We're looking for the slope right there at this point. That's the goal. Are you with me? Okay, cool. The way we do it is we take our knowledge of something we already know. We know that if we were to take and create a secant slope to the left, we can find that slope because you've done that before, you've done it for years. Okay? To find this slope, all you do is, you know, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I've done that in this software. The software is computing the slope for me, so I don't have to sit and do it over and over again. But as I move the point, like I can move up here, watch how that, well, that's interesting. Don't move with me. Um, if I make this line horizontal, the slope will become zero. It's too exciting to stop now. And of course, you know, I can't get it to stop, but whatever. Okay, questions? So I'm just computing the slope of that green line. <laughs> and moving the graph as well. Ah! Don't do that. Stop already. I don't think that's what I wanted. Now it's all messed up. Hold on. There's a fix for that. Yeah, undo. Thank you. That one. used to this board where I have the undo button right there. So anyway, I'm going to do a secant slope on the other side like this. Okay. Same thing. So I've got two secant slopes. Questions? Curiosities? Anything? Mary, please. Why did you make the secant slopes? Those lengths? The length is actually 100% random. Uh, again, totally random. All I have to do is make sure I'm thinking of a point that is to the left of A. So the goal is to find the slope, the tangent slope of this function precisely at x equal A. And all I'm doing is picking some random point that's left of A and some random point, I'll call it C, that is to the right of A. It really doesn't matter which one. Two points. Okay. And I'm just computing those slopes. What I'm hoping will feel very logical to you is we talked about already, and this is a good review for the test that you'll take. Um, we talked about that if a function is concave up, like this function is, then as I follow the slopes, I should see slopes that increase in value. And you can see it. This secant slope right here sitting at about a slope of 4 has got to be less positive than this slope here, which is a slope of about 15, because the curve is concave up. Uh, you'll need that on the test. Don't forget it. Question? Cool. You should also be able to see that the tangent slope, let's see if I can draw this, the tangent slope right here that. The tangent slope at this spot is definitely going to be, let's see, it's got to be more positive than this slope over here. So the yellow slope is more positive than the green, but the yellow slope has got to be less positive than this other green. The yellow's got to be somewhere in between those two. Please. Sorry, what's the difference? So a secant slope on a curve is always a slope between two points. So here I'm between point A and B. The tangent slope is the slope right at A. Two points. There you go. Cool. But watch. If I move this point closer and closer to A, you should see visually, like there I can see very distinctly, that slope is very different than the yellow. But as I move this point 
along the curve, it's stuck on the curve there, it won't move away from there. Closer and closer to A, the slope of this left secant in green becomes visually exactly the same as that yellow tangent slope. So as I get B close to A, the green slope starts to look just like the yellow slope. Same thing with this one. And sure enough, if you look at the numbers, look how much closer the two slopes are. Questions? Please. So if you forget the sequence of the tangent slope, you do like Yep. So one of the, like really the whole, well, I'll be honest. We study limits because I want all of you to get college credit, okay? So you don't have to take this in college. And the limits are on the test. But the reason they're on the test is because of what Merritt just said. Two more points. We want that secant slope to be really, 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 really short, infinitesimal in length. Same thing for the other slope. We want it to be infinitesimal in length. I tried to get the software to show you that. Like I tried to make it so I could zoom in on this point, like I always talk about, like zooming in on a curve. Uh, this is as close as the software will allow. This little you here. So just like we always talk, if you zoom in on a curve close enough, it doesn't look like a curve. It looks very, very flat. It's not, it's still a curve, but it looks flat. Notice how close point B is to point A. Like as far as the computer knows, it's the exact same x-coordinate. The computer can't distinguish that those x-coordinates are different. They're both sitting here at 1. Same thing for point C. The Y coordinate is just a little bit different for each one. That's as close as I could get it. When I try to get closer, the, the software crashes. So it just gives up. <laughs> Question? That's what we're trying to do. Notice how these two slopes now, let's go here. These two slopes are almost exactly the same. If we could get closer, the slope here would become 10.0000000 something, and the other slope would become 9.9999999 something. And our logical conclusion would be that the slope right at A must be stuck right between them at 10. Questions? That's how a tangent slope is found. <clears throat> um, I want to pay a ticket for that because it's a really good question. Don't ever, don't, it's very logical what Merritt said about finding the average, but it is not the average. It is literally the infinitesimal limit. It's um, saying if I make those points infinitesimally close to each other, I'm going to reach a conclusion that says, Hey, if I just keep making them shorter and shorter and shorter, that slope in the middle has got to be 10. It can't be anything else. So it's not an average, it's a limit. Um, here's how the limit is computed. Uh, you will be tested on this on the AP test, so make sure this makes sense. Uh, draw a picture here. So I have the curve. Like so, oh, that would be a box, not a picture. So here's the curve, like that. I am trying to find the slope right here. At x equal one, y equal five. So what I do is I create a secant slope to the left. I create a secant slope to the right. But now I've got to actually compute a slope. Like so far in unit one, we never did any computations. It's kind of weird math from what you're used to. We just talked about ideas. Unit two, we switch back to computations. So this, what I want is just like you saw here. I want 
this x coordinate on this side to be really, really close to this x coordinate. But I need it to be just slightly less, just a little bit less. So I'm going to call that x coordinate 1 minus h. There's nothing special about the letter H other than they use it on the AP test all the time. So I try to use the same kind of symbols they use so you get used to it. So this is saying I want that X coordinate to be one. I want this to be just barely less than one. Question. I want the other X coordinate to be barely more than one. Now I need to find the Y coordinates. So I need to know this right here is some function called f. Um, don't overthink it. Raise your hand. It's always better if you're thinking, not watching. Simple question. I just want you to say it. Raise your hand. If I have an x coordinate, what do I do to find the y coordinate for some function called f? Always. How do I get from x coordinate to y coordinate? Hand. Don't overthink it. You have some function, you have an x coordinate, you want to find the y coordinate. How do you always go from x coordinate to y coordinate? Look. Um, solve the equation. Solve the equation, plug, plug it, in. it in, it's kind of what I think of it is. So I have a formula here, f of x. The y coordinate is literally going to be this x coordinate, sorry, this x plugged into the f function. Okay, show me your hands if you knew I was going to do that before I did it. Two points, three for loop. Question. Please, Mary. slope of the orange. Slope is simply, so we're doing the secant slope of the orange here, secant slope. Slope is simply one y coordinate minus the other. So if I take this y coordinate right here, and I subtract from that this y coordinate, and then I divide by this x coordinate, subtract this x coordinate. This will compute the secant slope of the orange line, which is exactly what I did here just using the software. That's how I found the slope of this green secant line here. Just y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Question. Perfect. Do the same thing for the green one. So the secant slope over here in green is going to be this y coordinate, subtract this y coordinate. Oops, not f of 5, sorry, just 5. divided by this x coordinate, subtract this x coordinate. Question. Okay, cool. Now the goal is simply to make those secant slopes as short as possible. So what I do is I adjust h. I make h as small as possible. The smaller h becomes, 
the shorter the secant slopes. Question. Cool. Anything you was curious about? Is anything that pops to mind? Just jump in. Sweet. Oh, please. Wouldn't it be like five minus one eight? Oh, you could do it either way. As long as you're consistent. So I can take this y, subtract this y, and then this x, subtract this x, or the other way around, which is what I did. It doesn't really matter. Um, two points. OK, something interesting happens that I need all of you to see. Uh, the function I'm working with here is actually the function f of x equals, what was it? It's right here. Come on. 5x squared. So I'm looking at the function 5x squared. That's why when we plugged in x equal 1 right here into this formula, we got 5. Are you with me? So now we want to do what you've been doing with limits a little bit. You want to think of what's going to happen if we plug into f plug into here a number that is just slightly more than 1, just like we've been doing with limits. We plug into f a number that is slightly more than 1. Please raise your hand and tell me what happens when you plug into this formula. Don't overthink it, just I want you thinking with me. Hands up. What do you get when you plug in a number that's slightly more than 1? Come on. What do you get when you plug in a number that's slightly more than 1? Let's go, Dave. Uh, like, like just like a, a number like 25? Close, close. The tiny mistake you're making is you're multiplying the 5 and the 1 first. What we have to do is we have to do this. We plug in something just a little more than 1. Three points for Dave. Uh, like that. It's barely more than 1. So the squaring occurs first. So what's, stay with me Dave, what's Barely more than one squared going to be basically just one. Very, very close to one. And then very, very close to one times five would be five. close to five. How many knew it? Two points. Okay. So this is going to be when h is just barely, you know, just really, really close to zero. This is going to be very, very close to five. Very close. Infinitesimally close to five. Well, what's infinitesimally close to 5 minus 5 going to be close to? Say it. Yeah, it's infinitesimally close to 0. The bottom, if h is really, really close to 0, don't say it out loud, raise your hand. If h is really, really close to 0, what is the entire denominator going to be close to? Show me your hand. Cambria. How many agree? You said 0. 2 points, 3 for Cambria. Okay, it should feel a lot like the limit problems we've been working on in unit one. So this is a good review for the test. You're working a limit that happens all the time. You get really, really close to zero divided by really, really close to zero, and that's where we learn how to factor and that sort of thing to kind of get past that. Barrett, please. Well, wouldn't the above one be really, really close to zero times five? Uh, no, because when we plug in, remember H, uh, three points for merit. When you plug in really, really close to zero, this is going to become really, really close to one. Putting the one here, we're going to get this. Uh, I may have misspoke. This part here gets really, really close to five. This gets really, really close to zero. Well, since the first part gets really close, so you multiply one point no, you square this first. Well, yeah, but after that. Oh, then you multiply by 5. And then you have 5 point infinity zero, 5. Mm -hmm. And then you minus 5, so it's 0 point infinity zero, 5. Well, oh, I got you. My guys. Sorry. Three points for that. It's well done. I was missed. Yeah, it's perfect. Anybody else? Okay, cool. So here's the deal. We have a hard time finding that value. Uh, that's why I had to learn those methods for limits. So it is this point, like we showed you here, 
as those points get really, really close, we can actually compute those, those slope values. Um, another thing I need you to notice is this. We really want to find the slope right here, like right there, which means we really want h to be exactly 0. Raise your hand, you can tell me what happens when we try to compute this secant slope right here, or this secant slope if we make h exactly 0. What slope will we, what the formula tells us, this is the formula for the secant slope. If we move this point so close to that point that it basically becomes the same point, what's the computation for the secant slope going to be? Let's go, Amanda. This is going to become f of 1. Say it out loud, please. What is f of 1? Say it. Louder. You plug in 1 here, what do you get? 5. f of 1 is 5. What's 5 minus 5? 0. On the bottom, if this is 0, the bottom is 0 as well. So if h is exactly 0, the secant slope becomes 0 divided by 0, which as Amanda said, is undefined. Okay? Please. Is it because at that point we're just defining the slope of a single plane? Listen to Mara. Our goal, like I've been telling you for days now, when you look at this picture, right here, it's right here, sorry. This y coordinate right here of negative 60, that is the slope of the blue graph right there. The slope of the blue graph is negative 60 when x equals 3.3. But Merritt just said, how is that even possible? Because when I try to use this formula to find the slope right at x equal 1, I get undefined. Okay? That's why somebody discovered limits because they ran into the same dilemma. They're like, we can't find the slope at a point. So they stopped trying. Instead what they did is they found the slope of two secants that were infinitesimally close to that point, and they got them infinitesimally close, and they were able to conclude that the slope at A, the slope right at A, must indeed be that value that's in between those other two values. Like it's sandwiched between them. It's a limit problem. Uh, in fact, you all need to write this one down. The general formula for finding a, a, a slope at a point is this. So tangent slope. I call this the definition of the derivative. Tangent slope of some function f at some x coordinate that is going to be you take the y coordinate a little bit away from x and then you take the y coordinate at that x and subtract them so this should look familiar to you because this is simply y2 subtract y1 Then you divide by x2, which is x itself plus that little bit, represented by h, subtracted by x. That's simply the slope of a secant line that is really, really close to the point. And then what you do is you take the limit, and you make h become extremely close to 0. The bottom simplifies very quickly. That's just x2 minus x1. But if you look at the equation, the x is subtract to make 0. So the formula you'll see on the AP test will look like this. Let's say the limit 
as h approaches zero of f of x plus h, subtract f of x, all divided by h. And there actually are some different ways to write the formula, but that's the most common. So questions or curiosities about anything? Yeah, because the only difference between the two is here I have x plus h minus x, but the two x's subtract to make zero. Yeah, no, two point. What else? It's not x approaching zero, h approaching zero. Does that make sense? Two points. Thank you. Question. See if this helps. Your thinking is right, but just see if this helps. We are literally trying to work with a picture like this, where we have an x-coordinate, one, and we have another x-coordinate that really isn't one. It's got to be just barely less. The computer just can't do it. So there is some difference between them. Because this curve is rather steep, the difference between those two x coordinates turns out to be, I uh, have to trust me on this one, very, very, let's just say it's very, very close to one. Like point zero, 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 like very close to, I, not, I just shouldn't have said one. It's something like this, I don't know, okay? Well, the two y coordinates, it's easier to see how closely related they are, but it turns out that for this curve, because the slope is 10, the difference is literally exactly 10, like the ratio. So that difference of the numerator is more like this, one less zero. So that turns out to be a ratio of 10. Even though those numbers are very, very small, with the right mathematics, we can prove that the ratio is exactly 10. And that's the slope of the curve right at that point, uh, x equal 1. See if that helped at all. Okay. Three points. Anybody else? Uh, so unit 2 is entirely devoted to this idea of how do we use this to compute the slope of any curve at any point. That's where we're going in unit 2. Uh, that's enough for today. Unless anyone has a question. Awesome. Okay, we can spend